When a Java developer hears the word Maven, they probably think of the popular build automation tool, still going strong 18 years after its V1 release. But there is a shadow Maven working tirelessly in the background, a vital repository system which serves up dependencies needed for building Java applications. Without this system, the millions of Java builds happening every day just wouldn't be possible. In today's world of cheap cloud storage, this might not sound like anything special, but the Maven repository format was designed pre-AWS to store all kinds of libraries loved by Java developers, and it's still in use today. These libraries are stored as jar file artifacts and can be pulled as dependencies into Maven builds, Gradle builds, SBT builds, and even Ant builds. Whatever your choice of build tool, the code from the library becomes available from within your application code so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. So if you think it's time you understood this vital technology, stick around to learn everything you need to know about the Maven repository system. History can roughly be divided into two periods. There is the painful pre-2004, before Maven period, and the mostly happy post-2004, after Maven period. Before Maven, most Java engineers were using the Ant build tool and storing any required libraries in the version control system. Yes, every single library and transitive dependency was downloaded and stored in the project along with the source code. When Jason Van Ziel built Maven, which is part of the Apache Software Foundation, he included a groundbreaking new system for downloading artifacts from a remote repository. On the opposite side, Maven also included a way to publish to a repository in a custom format. This format made it easy for consumers to fetch any transitive dependencies. The first Maven repository is what's known today as Maven Central. It's a community-led repository that anyone's free to publish artifacts to. By pulling dependencies from a central location, you not only save on version control storage space, but it also means dependencies can be managed more effectively from your build tool. To understand how all this works, let's get into some implementation details of the Maven repository system. To build an application using the Maven build tool requires a pom.xml file, a project object model file. This contains an essential group, artifact ID, and version. These are known as the coordinates of the project. When the Maven build tool builds the project, generates a jar file, and publishes it to a remote Maven repository, the coordinates are used to store the jar file. For example, here's how the URL looks for the Apache Commons Lang3 artifact within the Maven central repository. It consists of the repository prefix and the artifact group, name, and version. If we browse the directory containing the jar file, we see other files have also been published. For example, here's the pom.xml file, which importantly contains a list of dependencies of this artifact. That means when a build tool downloads this artifact, it can also download transitive dependencies at the same time. We'll get into that shortly with a worked example in Maven and Gradle. Now that you understand the Maven repository format, let's learn about Maven Central in more detail. This is a repository hosted at this URL and it contains over 8 million artifacts. The Maven 2 refers to Maven version 2 released in 2005. Even though version 3 of the Maven build tool was released in 2010, it still uses the repository version 2. If you think this is a confusing naming convention, I completely agree. But the other confusing thing is that the Maven central repository is actually operated by a company called Sonartype. You might know them from just the strange name, or from their popular repository tool Nexus, which can be used to store private artifacts in the Maven repository format. So this company provides access to pretty much every public Java library ever. Pretty cool. If you go over to search.maven.org, you can search for any library you like and see all available versions, see the transitive dependencies of a particular version, and view the directory structure as seen earlier. An alternative way to search Maven artifacts is at mvnrepository.com. This is a search engine which not only indexes Maven Central, but other repositories too. If we search for the same artifact here, we get similar information, but I think it's easier to browse transitive dependencies through this site. The site also gives you the actual code needed to depend on an artifact in a variety of build tools. Let's see how this looks for Maven and Gradle. So with Maven, I can copy this XML snippet and paste it into my pom.xml file here. When I run a Maven build, it will download the artifact from Maven Central if it doesn't already exist locally and add it to the Java compile class path. 
Within the IDE, my code has access to the code from the Spring Boot Web Library. For Gradle, it's just a one-line code snippet which I paste into the Gradle build script. Running the Gradle build task also causes the artifact to be downloaded and added to the compile class path. But what happens when you don't want anyone else seeing your precious code in your published artifact? Well, you need to use a private repository. There are several options, including Sonar Types Nexus, I mentioned earlier, Artifactory, or my favorite AWS Code Artifact. Code Artifact is a fully managed AWS service, which means you can just click a button to create a repository and start publishing to it. Here's my private repository called Demo. I can publish an artifact to it using the Maven build tool with the provided configuration, or in a similar way from Gradle. Either way, I end up with an artifact in my private repository using the Maven format. That artifact can then be used in whatever Java projects I like by referencing the private repository in the build tool, whether that be Maven, Gradle, or anything else. That was an overview of the Maven repository system. I hope you can now see Maven as more than just a build tool. As mentioned, Maven repositories are also essential for building Java projects with Gradle. Since Gradle is my preferred build tool, I created this awesome course for anyone wanting to get started or just to understand the fundamentals. Go check it out and I'll see you next time.